I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and thanks for taking a few minutes to take this combination Cisco certification video practice exam and tutorial on Ether Channel configuration and troubleshooting. Even if you're relatively new to Ether Channels, go ahead and take this video practice exam because we're going to have quite a bit of solid information here for you on configuring ether channels, troubleshooting them, adding ports to them, and then seeing what happens when ports are removed. So we've got a lot of ground to cover here. I also invite you out to the Bulldog blog at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com where along with a great many other features we're currently introducing, I'll soon have my free 45-minute ether channel webinar online for you to watch in on-demand format so you can really get caught up on ether channels. Uh, that's a webinar that I've been teaching live for quite a few years, and I'm going to put it out there so that you can watch it whenever you get ready. Let's dive into question one here. What command puts a trunk port into an ether channel to begin with? We better know that before we get too, uh, too complicated here, right? What command puts a trunk port into an ether channel? And we'll see all these questions answered on live Cisco switches here in just a moment. When you create an ether channel, does the port cost change? from when you were using physical ports, because of course an ether channel is a logical bundling of these trunks. Question three, after you create an ether channel and you run show interface trunk, you don't see anything. Is that normal or does that indicate a problem? Then finally, question four, you have three ports inside an ether channel on a Cisco switch and one of the ports goes down. Which of these four things will happen? So let's go back to question one. So we'll be on the switches here quite a bit, and that's the way we like it. What command puts a trunk port into an ether channel? What I have here are two switches, uh, cleverly named switch one and switch two. And you can see that I ran show CDP neighbor on each just to verify the cabling and each switch is connected to the other switch by three separate crossover cables. And I'll show you, let's go back over to switch one. I'll show you the command, the basic command that is for creating an ether channel and it's channel group and then one mode on is what I selected here but the channel group command is what you use to create an ether channel and I'll show you what these options mean in just a moment when we add a port to the ether channel. So let's head back to question two. When you create an ether channel is the port cost different? Let's bring that pod right back up and, and run show spanning VLAN 1. So that's a good way to take a look at it. You don't have to memorize every port cost in the world, but it is a good idea to know that a fast Ethernet port cost is going to be 19 by default. But notice this PO1. This is port channel 1. This is the logical representation of the Ether channel. This port does not actually exist on the router. It's like a loopback. It's logical. But notice the cost, because what I did is I put ports 10 and 11 into the Ether channel and I'm bundling those two paths. And by doing so, that gives me additional bandwidth. And the more bandwidth I have, the faster the port, the lower the port cost. So the choice here would be that the cost would change and it would be lower. Because that's one reason we're creating an ether channel is to bundle that bandwidth, if you will. Now, if you run an ether channel and run show interface trunk and you don't see anything, you do have a problem. And anytime you run show anything and the router or switch doesn't show you anything, it just skips back to the prompt, then it doesn't have anything to show you. In this case, we would have a problem. But right now, you can see we do have two separate trunks. We've got our ether channel and we've got the fast ethernet port 0 slash 12. So we expect to see something here after we create an ether channel. It should definitely begin with PO for that port channel. So where did that number come from? You're going to see that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and add that other port to the ether channel, see what the result is as far as that port cost goes, and then since we're in a lab, we can practice with that a little bit, and we'll just go ahead and take it down. You don't really have to do anything fancy, like take a port down or anything where you're just adding a port to an ether channel. You don't have to do any kind of shut, no shut, anything like that. Here's that command again. It's channel group. And you can choose uh, the channel group number one through six. 
Now, obviously, I've got to make this the same channel group as the other ports if I want it to join that Ether channel, so I've got to put one here. Then you do actually have to type the word mode. Excuse me. And you can see that's an incomplete command. You've got to type one of these five entries. Now, for your CCNA, I would just know the on option for enable Ether channel only. But those of you working on the NP should know the differences between PAGP and LACP. But here we'll just go with on. And that's all there is to it. Now we'll go over to the other switch on 12. And that's it. Now let's go back to switch 1 and run show spanning VLAN 1 again. And you can see that that port 012 is no longer here because it's part of the Ether channel. And note that the cost went down again. The more ports we add to the Ether channel, the more trunks we add, the more bandwidth we have available, and the lower the cost will be. So let's go back to this question. What happens when a port goes down? Well, this is one of the beautiful things of an Ether channel. The trunk itself is not going to go down if we lose a port. And since this is a lab, we can do this. I'll shut one of the trunks that's in that Ether channel. And you can see that we get the usual messages. I'll run show spanning VLAN 1 again. We get the usual messages that's changed state to administratively down, and then the line protocol went down. But notice that the Ether channel itself did not go down. The Ether channel didn't go down. It stayed in forwarding mode, and that's what we want. But the cost did rise because we have a little less bandwidth available. Again, don't worry about you know what the calculation is to come up with that poor cost. We're not going to get that complicated in our studies yet. But I would know that fast Ethernet port is 19. That's a good default to know. And that concludes our Ether channel video here. Again, make sure to visit the blog because we're going to have that full 45-minute webinar for you to watch for free uh, on Ether channels. And we'll probably have one or two other ones for you to watch as well. So thanks for taking some time to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.